an LED power supply from China. It's a while since I've taken one of them to bits. And I bought this one because it had a particularly unique feature. The listing says DC 12 volt LED outdoor rainproof power supply, 600, 60 watt, 100, 200, 250, and 400 watt LED driver. And it does, it looks as though they're designed to mount on a wall or, or a tree or whatever. And then they do seem to have the facility to shed the water. And it also says helpful things like LED rainproof power supply, shows it on the wall. High voltage, non-professional, do not open it. Please cut off the power when you open the cover. Should be installed vertically. Do not invert or horizontal. And then it showed pictures of the bottom. You're thinking, well, that doesn't look very well sealed, does it? Let's open one and take a look. So when you take the unit out initially, it looks pretty good in the sense that it does have this plastic sh shroud in the top that will effectively shed water over the unit and stop it going in. But the bottom is completely open. There's no restraint relief. Those are effectively live connections in there, so it's not quite as waterproof as they're implying. Also, if you look inside, it's got this little lid that flips up. If you look inside, it, it's a switchboard power supply but there's big voids in here that insects like spiders or anything that wanted a nice warm home can get up in there. And anybody who has dealt with insects and switchboard power supplies, it's usually quite apocalyptic. So I think we should open this up and take a look. So I'm going to use these screwdrivers since uh, it's... Uh, uh, let's use... Not sure which size it's going to be, but it's Phillips screws. Let's use the VDE rated drivers. I don't know if that's actually going to fit up there. No, it's not going to fit up the hole up there. Okay, that's okay. Let's just whip everything off. So it's the usual construction. The plastic end cap is going into the end of an extrusion. I haven't tested the power rating. There's a couple of things you should be aware of if buying power supplies from China. One is that their electrical standards aren't quite up to the same standard as ours, and therefore the isolation between the main side and the low voltage side may not be quite what you want. It does carry that risk of stuff coming live. And the other thing you should know is that they tend to over exaggerate their ratings somewhat. So this one is actually supposedly 100 watt rated. I'd probably only use it to about half that if I was going to use this. What's this going to reveal? Oh, blame it. It's revealing a big void. Okay, the circuit board's well down in there. Let's uh, take this end off. Going to have to use the other screwdriver bit for that. It's a shame. I was kind of hoping it might actually have had some sort of like a uh, water shedding system, you know, vent holes to let it vent basically to let it breathe that always really helps with electronics like this but some sort of cable restraint and finger guard would have been quite nice it would have finished this off nicely and in a way they could have made a longer plastic section and actually incorporated that you don't want to seal it up completely because uh, that's uh, not usually a good result uh, it just traps moisture inside oh this has actually got a oh it's got a cover that slides off okay things i'm spotting immediately I'm spotting the incoming supply. I'm spotting an NDC inrush thermistor. Uh, tell you what, I'm going to whip this circuit board out um, and get some information on it. I'll take some pictures and then we'll take a much closer look at it. It has been reverse engineered. This is the short version of the reverse engineer. And there's another video with the full blown. It's got all the dirt in every single component, but it's only for people who are really into switchboard power supplies and technical stuff. The short version is that the power supply starts with a very simple uh, incoming supply here. It's got an NTC inrush current limiter. It's got the bridge rectifier and then a smoothing capacitor, and that generates a sort of high voltage DC supply for the power supply to switch this tiny little transformer with, because you can't run the transformer directly on the mains voltage when it's this size. To get the throughput required, it has to be pulsed on off at high frequency. That is done by this little chip here switching a MOSFET here. You'll notice the text is back to front here. It's simply because I've flipped this image over so that it relates to the tracks. So this little six pin chip is very clever. It does everything. It uh, drives this MOSFET which pulses the chip. It's got various sensing components. 
that couples across the output. It's got a diode pack on that output, which is also heat synced against the side of the case. Uh, and the output goes to this capacitor. The, when it reaches 12 volts, it signals back via an opto-isolator with a little zener as a voltage reference. That signals back to the chip to stop generating output until the voltage dropped again. And that, in a nutshell, is it. The separation, this green line, it shows the separation between the main side and the low voltage side. But it's worth mentioning that you uh, the transformers in Chinese products are always these non-tested, non... I don't know if they test these or not. Experience has shown in the past that the quality can be very random. But the output of this one isn't using the multiply insulated wire. It's using standard insulated wire. And the high voltage side makes a sort of effort with some sleeves, but you just don't know. It's, it's one of these things that I wouldn't recommend using these power supplies in a situation where the public could touch any of the metal work. If you're going to do anything that involves the public, buy a supply locally from a prominent supplier like DigiKey, Mauser, Rapid Electronics, CPC, all the big companies um, that you know in your country. The case is interesting in the sense that the circuit board is held in place at, and stopped from dropping out by this. It would be nice if this had been made longer and it had maybe some sort of clamps to hold cables in and something that when you closed it up it shielded everything while holding the cables but had perforation to allow this sort of air to flow through it for cooling and for moisture to get out it won't ever stop bugs get in if the bugs get in and walk over this part the circuitry could cause the power supply to mistrigger and blow up the separation from this ungrounded case because there is an earth terminal but it's not grounded the separation isn't fantastic uh, but nothing that, you know, a drop of water would easily bridge from one side from the live metal work onto the aluminium. But there's, you know, two, two to three millimetres clearance. They have at least made some sort of effort. Uh, so that's more or less it. I couldn't see this being used in the open on a wall. I think the only application I'd see it being used in that's relatively safe is to power 12 volt LEDs and say for instance signage where you had a box sign with the LEDs inside and this mounted inside the sign and the waterproofing, the little bit that sits over the top was purely protection against condensation drips landing on it. But other than that, uh, the best types of waterproof supplies are the ones that are fully potted in the sort of silicon, even if they are a bit more expensive because they do uh, have that extra protection. This one has the slight benefit of being repairable, uh, but would MD ever really actually repair one? Is it really viable? So that's more or less it. it uh, it's kind of drip resistant, I'd call it, but not suitable for exposed areas, certainly not mounting where the public could poke their fingers up the end. It's kind of water resistant, but not really waterproof and not really what I'd call outdoor rated.